Okay. This is Dr. Dawn Ewing. This is our evening Zoom meeting. Tonight we're going to be talking about EMF, in particular, you know, the 5K. I know my own personal experience is I had someone that came in looking at investing in these small little microchips that would go on the back of a telephone. What I decided to do was take a thermography picture of him, let him talk on his cell, cell phone for three minutes, and then document how much red there was. Well, I was shocked how much red it was. The side of his face was on fire, and there was a lot of white that was showing up there. I chose to take a picture every 30 seconds afterwards to document his coming back to his baseline. It took about 10 minutes for him to comfortably come back to that baseline. Then he wanted to do the entire research over again. Wanted to start with a new baseline, wanted to put his little gadget on his telephone, and then talk for three minutes again, and then do basically the same thing all over again. So I thought, okay. So we took a baseline picture. He put his gadget on his phone. I made him talk for three minutes. Now this time I was concerned that he knew that there was something that would make the possibility of there being less. So I made sure that that phone was touching his face. At the end of our time, we took the phone away. It was about a third as warm as it was the first time. And that is with me making sure that it was slammed up against his cheek. There was no gap of air in between there. And then we reshot images every 30 seconds and in three minutes he was back to his normal. I can't tell you what that thing did. It's just a little piece of plastic that it's called a phone cell sensor. I know you can still get them and they come in packs of two or three, and they're not very expensive, maybe $9 for the whole lot of three of them, and you can just stick it to the back of your phone. I have a iPhone case, and so I just kind of slip it in there and let it do its magic. Um, you know, there are studies that show that using the phone in a car is not necessarily the ideal thing because now you're implementing the phone frequencies bouncing around the inside of the car, which is a metal base, and that you are putting yourself and any people in your car into a position where you would be as if in a microwave. So not ideal. So, to expand from that, then I had a little girl that came in with some urinary tract issues and no one was really able to get control of it. When a younger child comes into my office and they have uh, things like bedwetters, just loss of urinary control for no unknown reason, my go-to is to look at the airway and see if in their sleeping, they have an apneic attack which frightens them and awakens them and then their sympathetic nervous system gets a jolt and that person has a loss of urine that was my best way to describe it and in fact that child did have a urinary uh, continent problem that looked like it was going to be because of airway but what was interesting was the mother's story you know we had this happen several years ago and we found out that we had had a, a smart box smart meter placed outside our home and we didn't have any control over that. And I called the power company and asked them if they would remove it and they wouldn't. So I simply got a person to come out and put some copper wiring around it and try to ground the box so it didn't bother my family. In doing so, instantly his daughter went back to a normal, hey, can I go over to 
so-and-so's in play and stopped bedwetting, stopped having problems with uh, urinary incontinency through the day. And now this 5G approaches and to her knowledge, nothing has happened to her home. And that's her story. And I said, gosh, I don't even know what 5G is. And so she said, well, look at your phone. And it says 4G up here right now. And I said, okay, I didn't even, I never paid attention to that. As soon as it's going to say 5G. And what they're doing is they're planting all this wiring underneath. And, and she pointed out to me what that was and that it's the orange and white uh, things along Kirkendall and 290. And I was shocked. I had no idea there were that many. Come to find out, they had just recently placed a pole near her home and put the 5G radio antenna up on that telephone pole. Now, there isn't a way that you can stop this process from going on because I've seen the emails of people trying to stop the process saying, I don't want 5, 5G near my home. Er, Lavu, I'm going to go ahead and uh, block you chat wise. At least I think I am. Let's see. I, I don't know if that did it or not. Okay, but it did create quite a, uh, an awareness of the 5G for me. So I don't know what your own personal experiences are. I do know that she had to have someone come out to her home and try to reground things that were off. And that's great that she has a safe place in her home now. But my frustration is she you know, what's she going to do when she goes out and uh, goes to school or, uh, you know, anything else? I see that something is up, but I can't read it. Is it better? Yes. It certainly is. And that's just simply because they had someone come out and place wirings al along the house in certain positions. I don't know who offers that service. Um, I'd have to look around to see here in Houston who offers that service. Okay, Carol, were you able to get a hold of? No, I was not. I left her a message. I phoned her, left her a message and sent an email. Okay, well, that's interesting. Blanche, have you heard from her? I know uh, Blanche and Carol are usually the better people to try to contact them. And so are, you are you talking about Whitaker? Sue Whitaker? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I had no idea. Listen, I had a hard enough time just getting to the Zoom conference. I mean, it just seems like every, I know I'm changing the subject, but every week, every time, it's a different password, and I never get those passwords. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Hmm. I'm I'm in the dark here. I mean, I just it just seems to me that if there's a, if there's a, a a conference that night, there should be an email that day to tell us link here. Here's the link. Here's the password. Simple. <coughs> and I've been going through my emails every day, and I did not see any email for tonight's conference. So I went back in history. I put in my search box IBDM. And an old email came up, so I put that one in. It was a different password, so I couldn't get in. It was very frustrating. Right. Yeah, right. very frustrating. That's good to know. I appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Sue Whitaker. I haven't, I haven't heard from her. I haven't spoken to her in a few days now. Hmm. If you like, I'll give her, send her a text right now. Yeah, I would. Okay. And maybe to Joan as well. Because in another couple of minutes, we'll have to DC the meeting. And that would be a shame because I know she has incredible information that 
if you're like me, is terribly enlightening. You're not really sure what to do with the information, but. Well, I managed to get myself up here into a big view and now can't get back there. We go gallery view. Oh, it looks like I'm going to have to take a Zoom meeting with Nikki. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, the view is so nice? Because uh, I'm just so scattered about what it is I can do. There, I can see Teresa. Hi. Who's that? What? That's Teresa Scott. This? Mm. Yes, I hear your voice. No? Whose voice is that? Oh, Nikki's voice. <laughs> no, I wasn't talking. Oh, okay. So who, who was it that just said hi? Teresa. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, are you trying to, are you trying to pull my leg in? <laughs> All right, I guess she must have, I'm just worried about her now, hope she didn't get sick. Yeah, I think she probably just got the whole time zone thing mixed up. Mm. <clears throat> you know? I don't hear something, I don't hear from somebody in a couple of days, I'm like, oh God, is somebody sick? Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I do know from personal experience that they have those little gadgets that you can put on the phone. Is there anyone that has had experience with those gadgets being helpful or non-helpful? So um, I, I actually, during this COVID time being, uh, this is Pranima. Hi, Blanche. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Hi. Um, during this time, with the increased computer use, I couldn't deal with uh, having this on my lap all the time. So I honestly am very, I'm one of those people who's very sensitive to mold um, as well as to EMF. I could walk into a mall and feel the energy around me and just say, okay, I can't take it. I have to leave. So I got myself two things. I, okay, let me see if I can bring it on on the phone. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to show you what I did now. Don't think I'm kooky, but I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe in you things. You wouldn't hang out with us if you weren't kooky. <laughs> Are you right? Tell me That's about right. it. That's right. Did Go you ahead. shave your legs? Oh, yeah. we have. I have one of those. We all have that um, okay. so on our phones. I, yeah, I got that. Now, this is a different one. I typically, when I did my feng shui, uh, feng shui um, not training, but kind of learning, they had more yeah. of a ceram ceramic one, but this was mm -hmm. something different. So I took my meter because I have one, I check things. It was okay. I don't feel like it made a huge difference. I do think my ceramic one did make a more of a difference, but I put this behind each phone. I put this on my laptop too. And then I got this, let me show you. I got these to put under my laptop. These are EMF shields because we oh. tend to put, put this on our lap. And I don't know about you, but I feel very tingly. And the heat, as well as I'm pretty sure EMF is doing something. So I put the shield mm -hmm. under. I tried to test it with the computer under and over, on and off. There was a slight change, but I feel my meter is in the greatest, I'm being honest. So I went with one. And I got my daughter and me one, and I just leave it under. And whenever I'm with uh, a computer, I tend to not put it on my body, number one. So I'm already keeping a physical barrier away. I'm a little bit more mindful of it. And then when I have to put it on my body, I'll use the oh. shield and then try to kind oh. of. What was that guy's name that was the Mary Rutzler's wife? He was an environmental hygienist. What kind of? Hygienist was he? Dr. Bretzler's wife, the dentist. Do Yeah, a friend of Sandy's. He came here once. He's an environmental hygienist. He travels oh, all around the um, world. Robert. Robert Stoller. And he's an environmental hygienist? <clears throat> you know? Something like that. Yeah, he'll go in and he's got all the No, I know. I need to I need his name. Uh, Robert what? Stoller. Guys, Pranima was talking and all of a sudden you, you came in. No, that's, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure that 
you know, these are my two things. I really don't know about 5G, but in the functional medic medicine community, there's a lot of buzz about it. Um, I'm not, I, I, I really don't she know too much health? about it. Yeah. No. Thank you, Praneem. I think it's important for everybody to unplug their Wi-Fi at night when they're yes. ready to go to bed. Yes. One of the things that we can do also is have our IT people uh, put a switch on and off switch on the router. So it goes off by timer and turns on by timer. That's yeah, another thing. About half an hour. Hello? Can you hear me? Uh -huh. and I, muted, I muted Carol because I didn't. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Yeah. So the on and off switch uh, is important. Teresa, I've just taken little elements and started to become a little bit more aware and adding these little things I'm hoping will make a difference because I'm sensitive and since I can't see these invisible things and I just put it in. So, and, okay, am I still muted or can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, interesting, you know, and I don't often pay attention to a lot of the EMF stuff. Every once in a while, twice, I've had a patient come in and I'm about to do EAV testing on them, which means that they're going to be hooked up to the computer. And the person has been kind enough each time to say, oh, computers and I don't get along. Don't be surprised if your computer wigs out. And me not knowing, what the hell does that mean? You listen to it and then you go about your business of hooking them up to the, you know, computer. Both of those times, my computer is fried. I have had to disassemble my computer and send it up to Utah in order mm. to get it completely redone. Now, wow. what does that mean when someone comes in and says, I have the capability of frying a computer? Now, it means I back away and say, that's very interesting. I don't know that I can do this test on you. I do have a standalone meter that's not connected to the computer that if they wigged it out, you know, might cost me a couple hundred dollars to fix versus what I'm having to send in my computer for, because I don't know what it fries. Um, the, uh, really the other thing that's the issue here is these patients that come in and say they're 5G sensitive. Some of them make claims that they don't feel good in their home when the 5G gets turned on and they can tell you a date that they didn't feel good. And that when they leave their home, depending on where they are, they feel much better. But again, if they're in an area where it's high 5G, they don't feel so good. There is a film documenting, I think it was the news team here, documenting a case of a woman who made claims that every single time she would drive by the uh, horse race field that she would start feeling like she was going to have a seizure and that she would in fact have a seizure. So they placed her in a blacked out bus. She could not see where she was. They had no idea whatsoever. And they drove her all over the city. Now, coincidentally, where the Houston racetrack is for the horses is near a very tall, I don't even know what they are. There's some kind of radio towers that are there that I never noticed before. I would hear people claim that when they drove by there, they felt weird. And that when they got out to the other side, they felt better. And I went, where were you? On the, on the tollway near the uh, racetrack. Hmm. That's hmm. interesting. They never pick out hmm. a different place. It was always that place. Well, come to find out in the documentary, that is where she had her seizure. Is right when she was in the vicinity of those poles. 
And there's been another documentation of a lady in England that's done that same thing, you know, submitted herself to a blacked out bus, having no idea where she is. And when she got to the area where the 5G was the highest, went into seizures and couldn't, you know, could not control that. So there has to be something to this yet unseen. And of course, we're the ones that are supposed to have a broad enough spectrum that we say, okay, I don't see what you don't see, but I also don't see energy and I don't see of, you know, mercury coming off of this filling. And yet I know that it is. So yes, my hope is that we are the ones paying greater attention. Don, may I just add something, please? Sure. Um, in my journey, I, I'm very new to biological dentistry. Teresa knows that. Uh, but what I have noticed is that when people become so sensitive, it's deeper than just the Gs, than EMF. A lot of the people may have sensitivities due to mold-related issues, Lyme. These are the patients who become super sensitive, who walk around never being no one understands them. There's a great book that I read and I would recommend because it's really along the lines of uh, what we discuss here. It's called Toxic. It's by Neil Nathan. It's called Toxic, Heal Your Body from Mold Toxicity, Lyme Disease, and Multiple Chemical Sensitivities. It really takes such a deep dive into mold, uh, li not Lyme as much, but mold and some of the some of the pathways, I think that some of your listeners may find this book to be useful. It's pretty thick and it's quite intense, but it's not one of those that you read in a day. It's just one of those that you have. You go back, you listen to it, you question, but there's, there's a lot there. And they talk about EMF in it. It's a very small part, but it's who the person becomes over time. They become very <clears throat> sensitive and then they feel it. <clears throat> Would you be so kind as to put the information in the chat area? Absolutely. I'll do that right now. But I think the important thing about 5G is that because it's microwaves, it affects people the most who have high amounts of metal in their body to begin with. So you don't want to put something on an aluminum plate, for instance. You wouldn't want to put that in the microwave, which is which is also microwaves, um, because you know that they that that aluminum piece of aluminum is going to catch on fire and start spitting and exploding. So when we have a high concentration of metal inside the body, you're going to be affected by 5G even more. So you can't help wondering why are they releasing aluminum and barium in the, um, the sky as chemtrails and just blanketing in certain areas with this very thin, thin cloud that settles down and breathes inside of us. I mean, I'm practicing a long time. I mean, I've been doing biological dentistry for 30 years. And in the beginning, I never saw the levels of aluminum and barium in people's hair that I see today. And it started about five, six years ago. We started seeing aluminum and barium on everybody. It's amazing. So the more aluminum you have in your body, the more you're going to be affected by 5G. The easier it is to trace you also. So when you stay five to six feet apart from another human being, you're much easier to track. And um, where have we heard that before? Right? And people who are loaded with heavy metals, They've got mercury in their body. They've got nickel. They've got cadmium. They've got uh, aluminum crowns with aluminum in them. Um, and then on top of that, they've got the aluminum that floats from the sky. It's going to affect them. It's going to affect them a lot more than it would anybody else. I know that... Um, let me see if I can go back up here. and I, I'm not muted, correct? Correct. I can hear you. Okay. I know that when, there we go. 
You're in the Grand Canyon? Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. I know that when I had a conversation with John Roberts, who is in England, mm -hmm. and we were uh, going to a meeting that was in Arizona, and it was about, they weren't even talking about Wi-Fi. They had 4G and just, you know, Wi-Fi was everywhere. It was in the hotel. It was in your house. Newer homes had Wi-Fi and were proud of it. Newer nurseries had Wi-Fi. Newer veterinarian offices had Wi-Fi built in so you could leave your animal and then you were given a code and you could watch your animal by your phone to see how the progress of your animal while you were gone. And his simple question was, uh, I, I see that you guys have Wi-Fi everywhere. Do you have a kill switch for your Wi-Fi? <clears throat> and I stopped and looked at him and I said, John, if I knew what in the hell a Wi-Fi was, I could better answer. <laughs> but it's not something that we commonly uh, refer to. So he stopped and said, okay, your Wi-Fi. And I said, okay. <laughs> Wi-Fi, now I can understand. No, we don't have any prerequisites for it. In England, if one patient comes in and claims, they don't have to have a card or anything else, that claims that they are sensitive to Wi-Fi in the office, the law states that you must have a kill switch for your office, which would take you to hard wiring. I don't know what kind of a difference it's made. Uh, would be very curious to see someone who'd been dabbling this strongly in those types of uh, gadgets or arenas. I know that we have a couple of different people in our organization that have been uh, at the booth spaces making claims of how it will neutralize. You know, my issues is how are you going to show me? Yeah, right, right. Now, how are you going to show me that wearing these beads is going to be as helpful as having something on my phone and my computer that I can actually feel? So, anybody else have any experience with EMF? Mm -mm whether it be in a dental office or heaven forbid you've had to go to a larger area like a hospital. Well, you know, in the old days, Dr. Hal Huggins had what he called the bubble operatory. So it was a room with inside of a room. That room that acted as a dental operatory was oval in shape and had wires running through the concrete or on the outside. And then those wires all gathered in one spot and they were grounded. So when patients walked into that bubble operatory, if they were sensitive to Wi-Fi, they felt terrific. And there were some patients who literally did not want to leave the bubble operatory after they had their mercury amalgam fillings removed. Um, and we had patient after patient after patient that said they loved being inside the bubble operatory. Of course, when the state board took his license away, the um, Environment, somehow or other, the Environmental Protection Agency got sent down to his office to take the bubble operatory apart. How they had the right to do that, I never did find out. So I actually bought myself a tent that fits over my king-size bed. And my plan was to run some very thin copper wire fibers through it and have it grounded. I just never got around to doing it. Has anybody else had any experience with putting a tent around your bed? No. No? Okay. One of these days I'm going to do it. Okay. Well, I think we've covered what we know. I'm sure I don't know what I don't know, mm -hmm. and uh, the don't know could kill me. 
I'd love to know <laughs> if there's something else right now. I think the safest thing to do is not use your cell phone near your your mouth. You're uh, putting it on speaker and holding it out in front of you and talking into it. I'm not even an advocate of the Bluetooth uh, earbuds because, again, it's introducing EMF. Uh, right, but the wires, the long wires, like I have the Bose wires, those are nice because it's, it's got a good four foot line on it. So I had a, I have a patient uh, whose parent uh, works, um, I think used to work for NASA or is working for NASA. He actually explained to me that Bluetooth carries less EMF to the body than being wired to the body. And oh, really? Yes. Huh. So you may want to look at research on wired versus uh, Bluetooth. And when we wear, I, one ring that I wear, uh, the only thing I wear on my body that's EMF and I had to really balance it is my aura ring to um, objectively look at my sleep cycle. I think sleep is an important lifestyle factor and I'm doing my own research on myself. And the aura ring, I put it on airplane mode. So this way the Bluetooth is not exchanging any material, you know? Mm -hmm. And then in the morning you can get out, I can get up and change it back and connect it and download information on my phone. So since my conversation with him, not that I have increased the Bluetooth use and I'm wearing one right now, but Bluetooth brings on less EMF to the body than hmm. wire, wired. So again, check that. I'm, don't okay. take my word for Thank granted. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, so if no one has anything else, we'll go ahead and um, end it for today. I'd like to put in a commercial for tomorrow because I put a lot of work into oh, the yeah. lecture. Well, tomorrow. Yeah, this is tomorrow to night, 7 p.m., I will be speaking about DNA. Awesome. See y'all later. Okay. Good night, Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.